What's up everybody, it's Warren and a very happy new year to all of you. I wanted to start this new year off with a bang which is why I'm really excited about today's video to present to you this theory that I've wanted to talk about for a very long time now. I did a video about 4 months ago on a theory talking about how Galactus is the Power Stone and how they could introduce him in Phase 4 in the MCU. I got a lot of positive responses from it but I also got a lot of questions regarding who exactly are trapped inside of the other Infinity Stones. So here's my video on how the Phoenix Force is the Mind Stone or how the Phoenix Force is trapped inside of the Mind Stone and how they can introduce the Phoenix Force and the X-Men in Phase 4 of the MCU. See you. I will also be announcing the winner of my Infinity Gauntlet giveaway at the end of this video, so be sure to stick around till the end to see who won. So, on the surface, this theory is pretty simple. It's what I stated. The Phoenix Force is trapped inside of the Mind Stone, and that's where the Mind Stone gets its power from. But of course, in order to figure out when and how the Phoenix Force got trapped inside of the Mind Stone, we have to dig a lot deeper. And in order to answer this question on how the Phoenix Force can be trapped inside of the Mind Stone, you have to have a little bit of an understanding of what exactly the Infinity Stones are in the MCU. But more specifically, what exactly the Collector says about the Infinity Stones in Guardians of the Galaxy and what Odin says about the Infinity Stones in Thor The Dark World. In Thor The Dark World, when Odin is explaining the Infinity Stones to Thor, he describes them as relics that predate the universe. Come with me. There are relics that predate the universe itself. What lies within her appears to be one of them. Nine realms are not eternal. They had a dawn as they will have a dusk. And then of course in Guardians of the Galaxy, the Collector went into even more detail about what exactly the Infinity Stones are and how they came to be. Creation itself, there were six singularities. Then the universe exploded into existence and the remnants of these systems were forged into concentrated ingots. Infinity Stones. So, how the Collector describes the Infinity Stones in this scene is very important. So, before the current universe that the MCU is in existed, there were six singularities. And then, the current universe exploded into existence. And the remnants of these systems were forged into concentrated ingots. And the key word here is remnants. Remnants that existed before the current universe exploded into existence. The definition of a remnant is a small remaining quantity of something. So what the Collector and what Odin are saying is that before our universe existed, there were these singularities, these systems, these relics that existed before. And when our universe exploded into existence, there were small remaining pieces of these systems left over. And then these remnants that were left over from the previous systems were forged into Infinity Stones. So those were how the current Infinity Stones came into existence. Now let's talk about how the Phoenix Force came into existence in our current universe. Our current universe exploded into existence from the Big Bang, but the Big Bang actually destroyed the previous universe. Just as Galactus existed in the previous universe as a person known as Galen, the Phoenix Force also existed in the previous universe. In fact, the Phoenix Force played a huge part in the recreation of Galen into Galactus. Remember, the Infinity Stones are remnants of the previous universe. If you go to Marvel's website and you look up the Phoenix Force, this is what it says in its biography. Born of the void between states of being, the Phoenix Force is a child of the universe. In the dying moments of the previous universe, the Force saved all existence from eternal damnation, enabling eternity to preserve the humanoid Galen, ensuring his recreation as Galactus. The Force was subsequently reborn from the cosmic fires of the Big Bang. So as you can see, in the previous universe, the Phoenix Force actually saved Galen, which enabled him to become Galactus in the current universe. And of course, obviously, the Phoenix Force existed in a previous universe and now exists in the current universe. This lines up exactly with what the Collector and what Odin said about the Infinity Stones. They said that before our universe existed, there were these singularities, these systems, these relics that existed. They existed before our universe, much like the Phoenix Force existed before our universe and then the current universe exploded into existence by the Big Bang banks and six elemental crystals hurtling across the virgin universe these infinity stones each control an essential aspect of existence 
and there were remnants of these systems left over, one of them being the Phoenix Force. So I said this in the previous video, but this is where you have to be aware that the MCU is different than the comics. They obviously don't just recreate the stories from the comics, they don't follow them to the T. However, they do draw inspiration from the comics. And this is how Marvel could, and quite possibly could have already, retconned the Phoenix Force being the Mind Stone into the MCU. It really wouldn't be that hard to retcon the Phoenix Force as the Mind Stone into the MCU. The Infinity Stones in the MCU are essentially pure energy. And if you look in the X-Men Phoenix Force Handbook, this is how it describes the Phoenix Force. Born of the void between states of being, the Phoenix Force is allegedly a nexus of all the psionic energy that has, does, and ever will exist in all realities of the multiverse. In the dying moments of the previous universe, the Big Crunch, the Macron Crystal, a hypercubical nexus of realities, was shattered bringing the entire multiverse to an end. However, the Phoenix Force saved all of the dying universe's inhabitants from eternal damnation. So, according to the Phoenix Force Handbook, the Phoenix Force is a nexus of all the psionic energy that has, does, and ever will exist in all realities of the multiverse. Sounds like that could easily be an Infinity Stone. Also, in the comics, the Mind Stone is actually blue, but in the MCU, they made it yellow, which matches the main color of the Phoenix Force is yellow, red, and orange. It's blue, we're blue, it's just important, okay? Trust us. Here is the main point and the really big argument for the fact that the Mind Stone could be the Phoenix Force. We learned and know that the Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver got their powers from the Mind Stone, but they didn't just get magical powers from the stone. We learned that the stone actually awoke powers that they already had that were lying dormant. We learned this from the Avengers Age of Ultron Prelude comic, One Shot. In this comic, it explains exactly how Quicksilver and the Scarlet Witch got their powers. In the post credit scene of Captain America the Winter Soldier, we learn that Wolfgang von Strucker is in possession of Loki's scepter. Then in the comic One Shot, we learn that Strucker has been doing experiments and tests on residents of the fictional European city, Sokovia, hoping to use the scepter to unlock any inherent powers that they may have. This is how Quicksilver and the Scarlet Witch end up getting their powers from Loki's scepter, which we of course have learned is actually the Mind Stone. But what we learned from the Avengers Age of Ultron prelude comic is that the Mind Stone didn't give the powers to Quicksilver and the Scarlet Witch, but it actually unlocked powers that they already had. Sound familiar? It sounds like the X gene lying dormant in a mutant. Exposure to the Mind Stone activated their dormant X genes, giving them mutant powers. This explains why all of the other people that Strucker experimented on with Loki's scepter didn't get any powers. They simply did not have the X gene inside of them. So this makes perfect sense that the Phoenix Force is actually trapped inside of the Mind Stone and it is actually the Phoenix Force that is giving Quicksilver and the Scarlet Witch their mutant powers. And this is how Marvel can introduce the X-Men into the MCU, by destroying the Mind Stone. During the Avengers vs X-Men storyline, the Phoenix Force returns to Earth. The Avengers anticipate the destruction that the Phoenix Force could bring while Cyclops and the X-Men hope to use the Phoenix Force to restart the mutant population. At the end of the storyline, the Phoenix Force sends a blast of Phoenix fire across the whole entire Earth. This activates latent X-Genes inside of people and creates new mutants around the world. Obviously, this can't happen in the MCU because mutants aren't in the MCU yet, but the Phoenix Force could be trapped inside of the Mind Stone. So, at the end of Avengers Endgame, if they choose to destroy all of the Infinity Stones to keep anybody else in the future from collecting them all and using them, they could unleash the Phoenix Force by destroying the Mind Stone, and also Galactus by destroying the Power Stone. But unleashing the Phoenix Force could activate the latent X genes inside of mutants, therefore bringing mutants into the MCU. This is a perfect and fitting way to bring mutants into the MCU, and I wouldn't be surprised if Marvel has is already planning this. Again, we know that Quicksilver and the Scarlet Witch got their powers from the Mind Stone, and we know they're mutants. Even though Marvel didn't own the rights to use mutants in the MCU at the time of Age of Ultron, they could have anticipated that they would eventually be able to use them. And now the Disney Fox deal is basically done. 
Kevin Feige, the president of Marvel Studios, has even commented on when we can expect the X-Men and the Fantastic Four to enter the MCU. And it's not long from now. He said that in the first six months of 2019, they're going to start developing stories. And Marvel has literally said that the Mind Stone unlocked powers that Quicksilver and the Scarlet Witch already had. There's no doubt that they're mutants and they were planning on them entering the MCU at one point. So it makes sense that the Phoenix Force could be trapped inside of the Mind Stone and it is what activated the latent X genes inside of Quicksilver and the Scarlet Witch. And then if the Mind Stone gets destroyed, it could send a Phoenix Fire Blast across the Earth, activating the X genes inside of people, bringing mutants into the MCU. So that is it on how the Phoenix Force is trapped inside of the Mind Stone and how the X-Men can be brought into the MCU in Phase 4. Let me know what you think about this theory. Do you think that the Phoenix Force could be inside of the Mind Stone and that the destruction of it could bring mutants into the MCU? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And congrats to Darth Adams for being the winner of the Infinity Gauntlet giveaway. Send me an email in the email in my description and I'll send you your Infinity Gauntlet. For the rest of you, don't worry, I'm doing another Infinity Gauntlet giveaway starting right now. So, if you would like to enter for your chance to win, all you have to do is subscribe to my channel with the notifications turned on, like the video, and comment down below with your thoughts and your favorite superhero. As always, thank you all so much for watching. Woof woof.